Well, it's been a beautiful day, actually. And I just thank God for what he has done lately in the hearts. And, and I've seen people, faces change, and smile. And, we're, and you know what? We're having an awesome time to be here. And we're blessed to be here. And um, what we're doing tonight is we're just adding. We just uh, continue to work in the areas that needs to be worked on. Uh, we touched uh, this morning this um, sin of the fathers or the family baggage that we are, or the family pattern and baggages that we carry. And it's really linked. It's all, they're all linked together because it's a, it's, it's a process. It's working and so that we become more and more free. And I just want to just praise God for what he has done in our lives. He's a, such a wonderful God. He's a, such a, a loving father that he loves us so much. Like that was said, that, that, that verse that he gave his son so that we, none will perish but uh, have eternal life. But also in this is just an expression of his life. And we're just uh, talking about having communion. But it's amazing what Jesus did for us. He proved it. That's you know, how much he loved us by his actions, by his words, by going to the cross. And but that was the only way uh, I would have given up. I would have turned away from that. But he, he, he didn't blink an eye. He loved us so much that he walked through it. And he carried the cross to, even to, so that he would be hung on that cross for us to be saved and have salvation and have a life of abundance and have a life for the, and not necessarily... Well, yes, financially, but abundance in the heart and the freedom. I'd rather be free than rich because a bondage holds us back. God wants us to be set free. He wants our hearts to be free. He wants our life to be free. Uh, you know what? God wants, have, wants us to have fun in life. He wants us to have fun. Uh, being a Christian is not a burden. It's a freedom. It's, uh, we need to acknowledge that. And sometimes we need... We, we, because we're going to be de dealing with ungodly beliefs, which are lies. And, and uh, um, for me, Christianity at the beginning, when I became, I became a Christian, it was, okay, it's a, it was a, a joy robber. <laughs> because you were not supposed to have fun. You were not supposed to laugh. You were not supposed to be, everything has to be serious. But God wants us to free us to laugh and to enjoy. Enjoy the sunshine. And to praise God for the sunshine that we're getting. Praise God for the snow we're getting. It's beautiful. I, sometimes you walk in, 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 in wintertime. And when the sun is out, and you're seeing all the, the snow, it's just like diamonds. And you see the trees are filled with snow. And, and ah, what a beautiful scenery. And you praise God for that season. And all the time. So God wants us to enjoy life. Enjoy life to the fullest. He said an abundance or abundant life. Well, abundant is abundant. I don't know what it is, but it's full. <laughs> Amen. So we're going to be doing a session tonight, and uh, two sessions actually. It's going to be we're teaching on godly beliefs, and we're going to be looking at soul sphere hurts, which all interlinked with the, what what we carry and what's inside. These are all, all things that happens to us. These are ministry or problem areas in our life. We all different nationality, different people. We're not one the same, but we have all the same problem. We're all the same. <laughs> we all believe lies. Uh, am, am I on? I think I'm on. I'm on? Okay, good. Thank you. We all believe lies at some points in our lives. And tonight what we're going to do is we're going to talk about ungodly beliefs. Things we believe since we're little people. Things that our parents told us, things our teachers told us, our friends told us. What are, what are ungodly beliefs? It's anything that does not agree with God's word, with his character, and with his nature. Anything that does not, is not in accord with his character, with his nature, and with his word. There Beliefs we have, their attitudes we have, decisions we make, agreements we make, judgments we make, behaviors, expectations, vows, anything that does not agree with his word. They're lies that we believed, usually since childhood. 
about ourselves, things that were told to us about ourselves, about others, and about God. Um, they're formed from hurts. They're formed from traumas. They're formed from negative expectations that we've been through and negative words that people have spoken over us. So we, that creates ungodly beliefs in our hearts. When people tell you you're stupid, when you're five years old, you go to grade two, grade three, grade four, you're stupid, you're stupid, you, stupid, you start to believe that you are. And after a while, you say, why should I go to college? I'm stupid. Why should I do this? I'm stupid. You could be the smartest man on earth, but you react according to what you're told, according to the lies that you believed. In Romans 12, uh, verse 2, it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we can be transformed because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. The, the results for ungodly beliefs, what it does to us, well, it, res, it restricts us from having happy relationships. We don't seem to deserve. We feel that we don't deserve. So it restricts us from unhappy relationships. It, cause, it causes us to justify my, your own or my own sinful behavior. That's what it does. It causes us to take everything personally. Somebody's going to say something, and we take it on like it's ours. That's because we believe those lies since we're little people. It traps us so that we don't fulfill our destiny. Um, I have an example of that. Um, there's, there, there's a girl that I know very well. Uh, in school, she didn't do good. She wanted to be a nurse. And uh, her grades were low, and the teachers kept putting her down, putting her down, put, putting her down. And her mom told her, you want to be a nurse? You can be a nurse. Just work harder. You'll be a nurse. Well, she, she took her pension. She worked 30, I think, 37 years as a nurse, as an RN nurse, because she believed the right thing. She didn't believe the lie that she was stupid. That is so good. That is cool. Yeah. Yeah. It causes us to hurt and defile those we love. Those ungodly beliefs, they cause that. It causes us to live with, with negative expectations of life. I'll never be able to do this. I'll never be able to do that. I'll never be able to go on a trip. We believe those lies. And what happens is we live those lies because we believe them. Um, it causes us to expect lack, failure, and mistreatment by others. We let people treat us badly when we believe lies, when, when we're thinking we're no good. That's what it does. <laughs> it causes us to be target, to put downs, sarcasm, anger, unhealthy patterns. That's what it does when we believe lies. It's, it causes us to open the doors to the demonic. It does that too. Because what happens is we agree with those lies. And our ungodly beliefs, well, they're in agreement with the kingdom of darkness. Well, who's the father of lies? Tell me, who's the father of lies? Satan is the father of lies. And what he wants to do, he wants to hinder us in knowing what, what God's will is for our lives. That's what he wants to do. And as our minds are renewed, we know. We can both know that our lives will be at a higher level if we believe God, if we believe God, as our minds are renewed. And a person's, it's written here, a person's behavior is determined by his belief system. He may tell you what he thinks he believes, but his behavior will tell you what he really believes. I can say, I believe this and this and this and that, and I believe that and I believe that, but just by seeing the, the person do life, we know what he really believes or what she really believes. Just by the way she do, he does life or she does life. And ungodly belief, is, it's, it's not about counseling, but it's about, it's not behavior modification. It's a renewing of the mind. And it's what we believe. If we believe the word of God, if we believe what he believes for us, we'll, we'll do wonders. We will do wonders. 
the most destructive thing about continuing to believe lies is that every lie, think about that, every lie is a contract with Satan, giving him permission to steal, to kill, and destroy your life. Every lie we believe, it's a contract with the enemy. So tonight we're going to do an exercise, but before we do that, uh, Claude would like to, uh, to teach a little bit about the belief expectation cycle. So this is a cycle, and, uh, and I wish everybody would just get a hold of that and understand that and run with that. But it's such a powerful cycle that we're able to, if we recognize that in our lives. Because uh, every experience, I'm going to go, okay. So every experience in life creates a belief. So everything that we experience creates a belief. And because what we believe is that it puts an expectation, it leads to an expectation that a similar thing or the same thing will happen again. And what happened is that because of that expectation, it has an effect on our behavior, how we behave, how we, uh, towards people and towards ourselves. And and behavior. This cycle kicks in all the time when an experience. And the experience could be good, could be bad. And the thing is, um, it has a, such a power in, in our life. And I just want to go through an experience just to give you an example. And why not I just I'll start, start with this question. Think of a hurtful experience that took place in your life. Think of an experience, a bad, a, hurt, a hurtful experience in your life. The question to that would be, what did I believe because of this happening in my life? What results did I expect? And how did I re behave because of the experience? So I'll just give you an example. And we, we could put a, many, many examples in our lives. Like for example, for as a little girl, as a little boy, maybe five or six years old, um, your parents never f celebrated your birthday because of uh, any kind of reason they never did. And, wh and what happened is that, that you experience you experience a hurt in your life. And what, what happened is there's a cr automatically there's a belief that it is it in installing you, start believing in your heart that you're not important. Your parents don't care how you feel. That you were born and you were, they were not expecting you. And, you. and he said, well, you feel that rejection and a thing grows in you. And the expectation is that, well, last year my parents didn't f celebrate my birthday. Well, the expectation, well, next year they won't either. And what happened is that it creates a behavior in your heart. You might feel that there is uh, anger starting to rise up, and rebellion starts to high, uh, rise up, rejection takes more and more place. And what happens a lot of times because we're hurt, then we're going to start go looking at uh, wrong places for approval. And because you're looking for some, so from encouragement, you're looking for some uh, uh, Acknowledgement. You're looking for some uh, that people, your parents, would really recognize and, and encourage you that, and bless you. But if you're, they're not there, what happened is that you're looking at wrong places. And what happened when your birthday uh, happened again the next year? Well, what happened? The fact that what you believe is reinforced. It's true. They don't. They don't love me. They don't care about me. They don't. They don't. Uh, they don't want me around, they're rejecting me, and, that's, and, it, and it stirs and it, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. 
And you know what? As life goes by, it might be at your, your wedding anniversary. If something happened that uh, it's not celebrated, what happened again? Well, that feeling or that belief that uh, you didn't, you were not important, it's reinforced. And it gets harder and harder and deeper and deeper. And the expectation is, well, my husband doesn't love me or my wife doesn't love me. And there's that, that feeling of rejection and, and it, get, it grows and grows. And what happened is that, the, well, my behavior started to, to be more and more. There is a, there's fights that might probably end up in divorce. You're pushing people away. Uh, or, or you're pushing, you're, you're removing yourself from the, uh, from the people that surround you. So you, you're, there is, you withdraw. So there's, that hole gets deeper and deeper. And what we want to do is today, tonight, well, is going to interject the truth, what God says. And to help us understand that there's another cycle that uh, is such a, a powerful cycle is that uh, um, it's, it's about truth and facts that happens. And there are true things that happen in our life. There are circumstances that happen in our life. And they're there. And because facts are based or ex it's because we experience circumstances in our lives, situation in our lives. And what happened when those facts are true facts, there are three events that took place. But it, it brings us to a place of choice. The choice is, we're going to believe the lie, what the enemy tells us, or we're going to believe what the Word of God says. But God in His gracious... Uh, he, if we believe a lie, God gives us a chance to turn that around and change our mind, to renew our mind, because according to, to, to Romans chapter 12, verse 2, he says that, that he says, be transformed. Be, let your mind be transformed. And God gives us a chance so to be able to change and to believe what God is saying. The Bible tells us about a little story. We, we hear that, and we, uh, especially in Sunday school, and uh, <coughs> way back when, uh, when the t 12 uh, spies went uh, t with uh, Joshua to, uh, to scout the land that God promised them to give it to them. So they went in the promised land, the 12 of them, Caleb and Joshua and the, and the, the rest of the, uh, uh, of the people, they, they went and the scouts, they went to, to check the land. And they were scouting the land, and they saw the land, and they saw what's in the land. They saw that they saw giants. They saw big fruits. He says, "Lord, they felt like they were grasshoppers." And he says, "Oh man, we cannot do this." And what happened is that when they came back, they told Moses, "We can't. We're just like grasshoppers. We're small. They're big people. We cannot do nothing." Well, the facts are the situation. They're true. What they saw is true. Is a reality. But they had a choice, like. Caleb and, and Joshua said, but God promised us to have that land. They believed the truth. They believed that God would give them that land even though there were giants there, even though there were big fruit, there were, there were many, many cities. And what they did, they went across. Joshua and Caleb crossed the river and they went across. But the other ten died. They were not able to walk into that promised land. And that's true. God wants us to change the way we think. God wants to believe what he says. His word is true. doesn't matter what the world says. doesn't matter what anything anybody says. But God says. If God promised something to you, it's true. doesn't matter what the doctors say. doesn't matter what your, your neighbor says. But if the God says that you're healed, well, stand on the promises of God. Until it re results, what happened is that Jacob, I mean, and, uh, Joshua and Caleb, they conquered city after city. Not in all one day, not in two years, but b little by little, they conquered the land. And it became their land. Because they believed God would give them the land. And that's what happens. The Lord, so let's, yeah, let's be, transform our, the way we think. I like what Yvonne says about the, uh, what we say and what, how we walk is two different things. Let's walk what God says. Let God's word be our default. Our default is true. We stand in it on the promises. And that's what we want to do is, Lord, help us to change our mind. Help us to believe the truth, what you're saying. And because we have such a, 
um, uh, I would say, an easiness to believe a lie. And it's harder to believe the truth than to believe a lie. A lie, it's easy to believe, but truth is harder sometimes. And it's because I use this story that uh, when way back in, I don't know, 1400s, uh, Jean Cartier came across and discovered Canada way back then. And other people came and just discovered more and more things. Why, was I there in 1400? I look at the book of history and I believe what it says there. And, it's, uh, and I believe Jacques Cartier came in 1400, whatever, 25 years, and he, yeah, put the cross on Mont Royal and says this is, belongs to France. It, did I believe that? Yes, I do, because it's a history book, it's written and it's true. Why can I not believe the word of God when it says, yes, I believe I am healed, you're delivered, you're free? Why can I believe? Because the enemy wants us to believe a lie instead of truth. Amen? So. Tonight we want to do that and change those lies into truth. Tonight we're going to do another exercise. I hope you have your pens and your, your pen and your paper because we're going to go through some lies that we all believe or most of us believe, 99% of us believe. And we're going to go through ministry steps again. And we're going to ask again the Holy Spirit to tell us what he thinks about that lie. What's his truth? So the, the, the ministry steps are as follows. I, con I confess my sin and my ancestors' sins of believing the lie that, for example, I'm bad. Okay? Number two, I forgive those who contributed to my forming this ungodly belief. Is it... My mom, my dad, is it my teacher, is it my friend, is it so-and-so, you can call them by name when we whisper them out loud. We have to forgive these people that have pushed, pushed us down to believe lies. Um, number three, I ask you, Lord, to forgive me for receiving this ungodly belief, for living my life based on it, and for any way I have judged others because of it. I receive your forgiveness. Number four. On the basis of your forgiveness, Lord, I choose to forgive myself for believing this lie. I renounce and break my agreement with this ungodly belief. We, we choose to break it. I cancel my agreement with the kingdom of darkness. I break all agreements I have made with demons. So what we're going to do is we're going to pause and we're going to ask the Lord, what's your truth? What's your truth, Lord, about that lie? And I wrote it down for that one is, and we, we will declare it together. I choose to accept, believe, and receive the godly belief that instead of I am bad, well, God says I am perfect in his eyes. This is what I heard from God. This, this is just an example, but this is what we are going to do. We're, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell lies, and we're going to ask, God, what are you saying about that? What is your truth about that? We might all have a different answer. So we will wait upon the Holy Spirit. And once we feel that we all have an answer, then we will declare it. You, you will declare it for yourself because we're, we will all have different answers. So we will say at the end, number six, I choose to accept, believe, and receive the godly believe that, and you can say it. And it's going to be a blessing from God. And we're going to ask you to repeat those blessings for about 30 days, minimum 30 days, because those are the truth from God to you. Enough of believing lies. God wants to tell us what he believes about those lies that we've believed for so long. So the first lie that we're going to do is, I am not worthy to receive anything from God. A lot of us have believed that, especially as Christians. We've asked things sometimes, and we believe that God has not answered them. He had a reason why he said no. Sometimes God says no, but there's a reason why. And then we turn around and we don't believe. We choose not to believe. So let's, let's do that together tonight. Can you please repeat after me? I confess my sin 
and my ancestors' sins of believing the lie that I am not worthy to receive anything from God. I forgive those who contributed to my forming this ungodly belief. I forgive those who contributed to my forming this ungodly belief. Specifically, who? Who, who said to you, I'm, you're not worthy to receive anything from God? Or is it just me that said that to myself? I'm not worthy to receive anything good from God. So number three, I ask you, Lord, to forgive me for receiving this ungodly belief, for living my life based on it, and for any way I have judged others because of it. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your forgiveness. So on the basis of your forgiveness, Lord, on the basis of your forgiveness, I choose to forgive myself for believing this lie. I renounce and break my agreement with this ungodly belief. I cancel my agreement with the kingdom of darkness. I break all agreements I have made with demons. So let us pause and ask the Holy Spirit, as Jesus, as God, what's your truth? What's your truth, Lord? Just like this morning, it could be a still, small voice that speaks to you. You could see a picture. You could feel something in your heart. As soon as you get it, just write it down. Just write it down. God wants to bless you tonight. Yes. Is everyone okay? How are we doing? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. What's your truth? <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So would you be willing to declare your godly belief? I choose to accept, believe, and receive the godly belief that, so you can say it, you can declare it to yourself. You can declare it to yourself. Hallelujah. Mm. Oh, Is there anyone that would be brave enough to say what they received? Anyone? It 
It's okay. It's okay. It's okay if you don't want to share it. That's good. That's good. Let's go to the second ungodly belief that most of us have. The ungodly belief is, if you knew the real me, you would reject me. Have we ever believed that? Do we believe that sometimes? Of course we do. Of course we do. So let's, let's confess that together. I confess my sin and my ancestor's sin of believing the lie that if you really knew me, you would reject me. I forgive those who contributed to my forming this ungodly belief. Specifically who? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I ask you, Lord, ask you, Lord to, forgive me to forgive me for receiving this ungodly belief, for, this ungodly belief, for living my life based on it, for my life and for any way I have judged others because of it. I receive your forgiveness, I Lord. On the basis of your forgiveness, Lord, I choose to forgive myself for believing this lie. I renounce and break my agreement with this ungodly belief. I cancel my agreement with the kingdom of darkness. I break all agreements I have made with demons. So, Lord, what's your truth that if you, if you knew the real me, you would reject me? What's your truth, Lord? What are you saying about this, Lord? What are you telling me about this lie that I believed? What's your truth, Lord? Are we okay? Are we good to declare that together? I choose to accept, believe, and receive the godly belief that. Yeah. Yeah. If it's from God, it's good. It's all good. Of course, I'm worthy. And of course, no one will reject me. Ah, hallelujah. Ah, yes. If you knew the real me, you would love me. That's for sure. There's another lie that some of us have believed, and the, the lie is God has let me down before. He may do it again. So this is a lie that a lot of us have believed. So let's do it together. 
I confess my sin and my answer sin of believing the lie that God has let me down before. He may do it again. I forgive those who contributed to my forming this ungodly belief. Specifically who? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me for receiving this ungodly belief, for living my life based on it, and for any way I have judged others because of it. I receive your forgiveness. So on the basis of your forgiveness, Lord, I choose to forgive myself for believing this lie. I renounce and break my agreement with this ungodly belief. I cancel my agreement with the kingdom of darkness. I break all agreements I have made with demons. So the lie is, God has let me down before. He may do it again. I can't trust him. So what's your truth, Lord? What do you have to say about that, Lord? Yeah, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, what's your truth? Mm. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. What's your truth? What are you saying, Lord? What are you saying, Lord, in my situation? What's your truth? Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Mm. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Are we good? I choose to accept, believe, and receive the godly belief that, yeah, mm. God will never leave me or forsake me. He's, he's got me in the palm of his hand. That could be an answer. He never lets me go. I'm his child. I'm his beloved. He will never leave me. I fully belong to him. Yeah. Yeah. So the last one we will do tonight is, in order t for me to be safe, I have to be in control. That's an ungodly belief. Can we say it together? I confess my sin, and my ancestor's sin, of believing the lie that in order for me to be safe, I have to be in control. <laughs> I forgive those who contributed to my ungodly belief. Specifically, who? Who caused me to believe that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I ask you, Lord, 
to forgive me for receiving this ungodly belief. For living my life based on it. And for any way I've judged others because of it. Yes, I receive your forgiveness, Lord. Yes, Lord. On the basis of your forgiveness, Lord, I choose to forgive myself for believing this lie. Yeah. I renounce and break my agreement with this ungodly belief. I cancel my agreement with the kingdom of darkness. I break all agreements I've made with demons. So what is your truth, Lord? That in order for me to be safe, I have to be in control. What's your truth? Oh, Lord. What's your truth, Jesus? Hallelujah. Um, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. So can we declare the godly beliefs together? I choose to accept, believe, and receive the godly belief that just say it. Just declare it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. My safest place is with you, Lord. You're in control of my life, Lord, and you make it safe. It could be anything. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So again, I would suggest, strongly suggest that you would repeat those on a regular basis. We, we've, we've seen kids at school of ministry and they would write all their godly beliefs on the mirror, on their wall. They would reread them, read them and reread them and reread them because it takes at least three weeks before we start believing what we read. It's like we take a habit in like 23 days or something like that. So let's take that habit to believe what God believes for us. And try to recognize. I pray that the Holy Spirit will make you so tender to recognize the lie of the enemy. Because the enemy goes into our thought system and wants us to believe lies about ourselves. And once we believe lies about ourselves, we live our life based on those lies. Mm. So ask the Holy Spirit. It's easy. You could be driving a car. You could be at home doing dishes. You could be doing anything. When the enemy mm. puts a lie in your mind, just repent from it and, and ask God, what's your truth? What do you say about this, Lord? And he will answer you. He speaks to us all the time. We're just not listening. But if you pause and say, Lord, what are, you, what are you telling me? What's your truth about this situation? This is what I believe right now, Lord. I'm, I repent from it. Mm. So, Lord, what, what, what are you saying? What are you saying to me? What's your truth? He will tell you the truth. And stick to it. Get a Bible verse to back it up. Mm. Because God backs up his word. Mm. When he tells you something, he always backs it up. Mm. So go to the word. Mm. Get, get, 
Bible verses mm. and write them down and mm. read them over and over and over again, and your faith will increase. And that, God, that ungodly belief will take a ride. You won't mm. believe that anymore. Mm. So it's just a, this is just a small exercise, but it's something you can do at home five times a day if you have to. Mm. If you have a lie, do it. Mm. Please do it. It mm. works. Mm. Yes, and again, it's a part of the process of cleaning our garden. We're pulling out those lies out of our lives, out of our heart, out of our way of life, so that we, there is it, and we plant the truth in our lives. So, Father, I just thank you that uh, for what you are doing, for starting this process of uh, our, our mind being transformed by your word, by your truth, because you want, you want us to be set free to walk in your will, to walk in the ways that you've called us to do. And Lord, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would just water those truth and let it place, just like you're planting, like, like we're planting around here, like I'm not a farmer and I'm not a gardener. We have, I have, we have, I have, I have plastic plants instead of real plants because they're easier to take care of. <laughs> But it's just, just the water. So the, way the seeds or those seeds are planted in the heart and the soul that is ready, this earth is ready to con so that it takes root and takes place in our lives because we're being transformed every day by the truth of God.